Hey crafty friends, it's Jeannie and I'm back with another slimline card featuring a bunch of Avery L stamp sets. I am using Peekaboo Fair, Peekaboo Coaster, Peekaboo Pals Camp Wanna Stamp. So I'm using bits and pieces from each of the stamp sets to create this fun amusement park scene. And I do have a sort of template going just so I know where to place the little critter's hands because I am masking everything. It is a one layer card. I know that I have other videos with these scene cards and I think that I've edited out most of my mistakes and things like that. And this card, I haven't made a card in about a week. And apparently I get rusty real fast because I run into so many different issues. I stamped in cut out mask for mostly everything. And that really helps me figure out where I need to place everything as well. So first I want the Ferris wheel to be out in front. So I am stamping all the little critters that are going on the Ferris wheel first. I am also using a mix of Eclipse masking paper and post-it notes. The post-it notes are just there because it's easier when it's like a smaller area. Um, Eclipse masking paper is really good when you have a ton of things that you want to mask and it just saves you on the time trying to fit on the post-it. So once I have all the critters stamped out, I will go ahead and stamp out that Ferris wheel. I had toyed with the idea of doing many different cards for this scene. I wanted to do a tri-fold card, I wanted to do a fun fold, and I thought that it just ended up being way too complicated and I just didn't want to deal with trying to figure it out. So I went with a simple scene card. And although I say simple, it became a little bit more complicated than I had expected. Only because I ran into a few issues and I'll point them out along the way because I usually do edit out minor issues, but this time there are just so many. So I wanted to show them and how I fixed it as well. So once I stamped everything in the Ferris wheel, I went ahead and stamped this coaster. And I really wanted the Ferris wheel to be right in front of the coaster and the coaster is going up super high. I personally love amusement parks. So this was a perfect card. So I used the mask as a template to place all my little uh, critter hands. And this is where I make my first big mistake. I forgot to put down the mask and I am stamping right over their hands. I already put so much work in the Ferris wheel that I was just not about to start over. And there's a simple fix for covering that up. So thankfully, no big deal. I just was really frustrated because I had forgot to put down the mask. Sometimes with Eclipse masking paper, it's white and you kind of can't see it. And sometimes that's why I actually prefer the post-its because they're colorful. It worked out and I was able to fix it later on and I'll show you how. For the background, I used a bunch of Distress Inks to create a sunset background. I love this combination of colors and usually only use about three for a background, but since a slimline allows so many other colors, I went for it. Here is where I ran into my second issue while creating the background. My Distress foam pad kept snagging on the unicorn horn and usually if my mask snag when I ink blend, I'll use a Tombow Mono Multi Glue on it since it's repositionable if you let it dry for a little bit and it'll get sticky and it works just like masking paper. However, instead of putting it on the masking paper, I apparently thought it was a great idea to put it directly on the card panel. It was not a good idea because it totally stuck. I was able to fix it because I colored right over it. I'll point it out when I color it, but that was my second mistake. When I finish the background, I go in and mix some Perfect Pearls with water and splatter it towards the top because that's where I wanted stars to start appearing since it was sunset. So once I removed the mask, this is where I realized that I had added the glue directly to the card panel. And so I am going in with an adhesive remover as well as a craft pick because a layer of the masking paper just stuck and it left adhesive film right on the unicorn horn. And it wasn't a big deal, but I mean, it's just something that you need to be careful about if you're using glue for your card panels. I do like Tombow Mono Mote glue because you can create your own masking paper, but you cannot put it directly on a card panel. So for the coaster, I wanted 
it to be a very tall coaster. And of course, this particular stamp set, the coaster is only about an inch and a half or so. So I had to go in with a ruler and create my own lines. So I was totally in the zone, created all the lines. I used a T ruler for the longer areas where there wasn't a start of the coaster. I just kind of guesstimated the difference in the lines and it worked out. You're not going to notice that it's not perfect. Although I thought that this was a good idea to have the Ferris wheel in front of a coaster, I didn't realize how many lines were going through the Ferris wheel and you just couldn't distinguish it. So this was my third issue that I ran into and my fix was the same fix as the one for the skunk and the owl. I just re-stamped it on a piece of scratch paper and I'm gonna fussy cut it and glue it right over it. You will not notice. It is a one layer seam card, but if you look closely, you'll notice that there are three pieces that are kind of uh, dimensional on the card, but I really don't think anyone who receives this card would be like, hey, what's going on there? So these are really easy fixes if you don't want to start over. You can always cover stuff up. Uh, you can also use any method. For the owl and the skunk, these are both very dark animals. I could have just gone in with a Copic marker and colored the arms really darkly so you wouldn't see the stamped lines, but I thought that I might as well since I had to do it for the Ferris wheel anyway. The Ferris wheel, for sure, I couldn't have colored dark enough to cover up all the lines that had gone through it. But thankfully, it was a large solid area that I could just stamp and color and just glue right on top of it. For all my coloring, I used Copic markers. I went in with my darkest color first and worked my way out to the lightest. I think that most of these critters are really easy to color. I only had a bit of an issue coloring the skunk because it's just all black and it's kind of hard to add that shadow and also keep the black color. So I almost kind of colored him all one layered, but I was able to distinguish the tail and the head by adding a little bit of a black Copic color to the tail to create a larger shadow. And then I used my C5 to color all over his face and the lighter color kind of picked up the darker color that I had put down and it created enough of a difference between the head and the tail where you can see him stand out a little bit more and his tail kind of take a back seat. So I'm just coloring the rest of the critters from the darkest to the lightest and I think that it's just really fun just to sit down and color. Here I'm coloring that unicorn horn and if you are looking at it in person, close up and touching it, you'll notice the weird texture on the unicorn horn. But in photos and in the video, you cannot tell at all. So I think that as a crafter, you kind of have to let the small things go just so you don't spend so much time agonizing over a card. I think that as crafters, we're probably perfectionists and we want everything to be completely perfect if we're giving a card to another person. However, I've realized a little minor things that you as a crafter notice, other people's as a recipient of your card don't notice. And I think that we just need to be a little bit easier on ourselves and not worry so much or put that pressure to make the perfect card every single time. And I've kind of let that go for sure because I used to spend so much time remaking a card until I was 100% satisfied. I am actually really happy with how this card turned out. And I think that even though you make mistakes, people won't notice them. And you kind of have to give yourself that break where if you spent a lot of time on it and you give it to somebody, I think that they'll just appreciate it for the fact that you had spent time creating this card for them. These little small mistakes show you that I'm not a perfect crafter. My cards might look perfect on Instagram, but it takes a lot of work to create them and put these videos together and go through this process where you're kind of criticizing yourself and wondering if it's good enough to share with others. And I think that I've just kind of let that go. I am creating because I love to create 
And I think that that's how this hobby should be uh, for everyone. I think everyone should just be happy with what they're creating as long as it brings them joy. So yeah, <laughs> so just remember to not be so hard on yourself. And I think that it's just crafting is an escape, right? And it lets you create these scenes that you don't see in real life because when was the last time you saw an amusement park filled with critters on the Ferris wheel and the roller coaster? And who knows, are unicorns even real? <laughs> they are in my head. Anyway, I am just finishing up the coloring for the card and I had inc incorporated pink, blue, and purple throughout the card. I like to use the same colors because I don't like using so many Copic markers for a card. And I also like to use repeating colors so the whole card looks cohesive. I really like how the Ferris wheel ended up turning out. I thought that because there was no pop of color near the bottom of the card, the fact that I filled up the Ferris wheel star with these colors really made it pop and really finished off the card. So even though it was because it was a mistake, I thought that this fix added to the card and just gave the color that it really missed. So I fussy cut everything out and there are white edges when you fussy cut. So I went in with a Memento Tuxedo black marker and just edged the image and that creates the black where it just looks really continuous and you can't really tell that there's a second layer on top of this card panel. So I just went in with glue and added all the little hands and then I also added the Ferris wheel. I did create this card panel to be a little bit bigger than a normal slimline card dimension that I use which is three and a half by eight and a half. So I do trim down the sides a little bit. For the sentiment, I wanted it to be on top of yellow because I wanted to incorporate that color from the bottom of the card to the middle of the card and just have it appear elsewhere. So I went in with Distress Inks to create that background, but it didn't have the dimension I needed. So I went in with a Copic marker and added that dimension. So I hope you enjoyed this card along with its mistakes. I'm also including a little blooper of my reaction when I misstamped my card. So I hope you enjoy it and I will see you guys next time. Bye.